Diana Krall, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. So I got to start by my pleasure. I've been, we've, we, you and I have been talking for the, the past 10, 15 minutes, and I've been trying to hold off on trying to tell you this story because I've been, I've been dying to tell you. So I have a confession to make for you. In 2002, at the Junos in St. John's, Newfoundland, you won. Uh, Best you won, day ever. You won a couple of Junos. You won Artist of the Year, and you also won Album of the Year for the record The Look of Love. I was a young, I was a young man. I was in junior high, and I was in my. I had gotten a seat at the last minute. I went down and kind of begged for seats. Uh, and they put me behind the, the jib. They put me behind the camera. Obstructed view, right? And I, and I was a really, really big fan of yours. And I really, really liked your music. And you got up and you accepted the award. And in one of those rare kind of quiet moments where you kind of went, oh, thank you. I shouted out, I love you, Diana. And you Are said, you the guy? And you said, I love I you love too. I love you too. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, that's me. I think there's, I remember that so well. Yeah. You're going to make me cry now. I didn't expect that. That's me. You don't like cry off the first, like the, in the first that's conversation. That's okay. You can cry all you want. We got tissues. Tom. We got everything. But that's, that, was, that, was, that was me. That's amazing. I remember that. <laughs> do you really? Yes, I do. That was a very, very spectacular time for me being there. And I, I wanted to move there <laughs> after that. <laughs> It was a, it was just it was such a happy time. We had I loved it. I loved every moment. I never and, um, yeah yeah. And not because I not because I won, but just the just the the vibe and the feeling, and it was unexpected. Yeah. And um, when I when I was in grade, so when I went back to school the next day, our teacher had taped it. I had it. no idea. He had taped it, and he I've been trying. Well, there's, to, there's it's it's it's, it's on, there's there's, yeah, yeah. A, there's a there's a YouTube of it, right? There's not on YouTube. We're like we're tracking down. A... We're tra- trying to track down the archive, right? <laughs> I might think my mom thinks she has it on VHS. She's gonna try and dig it out. Yeah. So the I te- think I've seen it for some reason. The teachers taped it, and they played it for my class the next day, because like Tom got on TV. Who I've seen it, so I know some because somebody it, it surfaced somewhere, and it broke my heart. And I had now I'm just completely, I can't finish my sentences anyways. That's why I'm sitting here at the piano. Right. But I'm completely. Uh, so I didn't. Mean I had pre- no idea. I didn't even know you. I didn't even know you liked me at all. <laughs> I just, I thought oh really. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had. Oh, wow. I, had, I had that record. I, I liked you because uh, when I was a, a kid, in like grade seven or grade eight. Um, you keep you keep reminding me that <laughs> I was just a mere. I was Sorry. in college. No, I was, when, when I when I was in my late fifties, there was a uh, there, there was a you did a special. I think it was on Bravo. Um, and it was, it was on, on Bravo TV and I just happened, I was staying up late. I was like later than my, I think my parents had gone to bed and I'd snuck up and wanted to watch TV and I came across and it was the first time I had really ever seen jazz before. And I got, and what, were you I, playing at the time? I'm I wasn't sorry, playing, I, I was playing folk music. I was playing, yeah, but uh, you were playing. Yeah, were... I was playing a little bit and I, I play a little piano. So I was trying to play a little bit of that too. And all these years I didn't know it was you. Mm-hmm. And isn't that like, isn't that, isn't that? Just the nicest thing, as my mom would say. Well, you know, yeah. and I feel like if it wasn't for that moment, maybe I wouldn't be here yeah. right now. <laughs> that was my first, that was my TV and, debut. And radio, as you know, I, is very, very inspiring. Inspires everything I do. It's I, I always say that it's all about. For me, it's all about radio. More than television. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my favorite movie is Radio Days. Oh yeah, you like the radio? We had so many of them in my house growing up, and all on at the same time. Mm-hmm. A lot so. of the, a lot of these songs are. are uh, I was thinking about this record the other day because a lot of these songs are kind of from that era, that pre-television era. There's that era where you know where we're listening to things on the radio. Like I'm a big fan of the Grand Ole Opry. That's the idea that mm-hmm. people would come in out of the fields and people would come together and listen mm-hmm. to, listen to the radio. And and when you're covering blue skies here, covering when you're doing versions of blue skies here and you're doing versions of, of I'm confessing here. Uh, tell tell me tell me a little bit about what made you go down the path to pick some of these songs out, these older songs. I well, first of all, um, the songs uh, that that I chose um, are, are very modern, and I think it's you, you can you you refer back to something like, where, for instance, Moon Glow, where I feel it's you know a rainy day or whatever, or, or the a roller rink at Coney Island, whatever's in my head. I think cinematically, so I'm always thinking of a film, not necessarily re- referencing a specific film, but I have a story and or, or a visual in mind, always. So. Um, uh, I realized that I I have to improvise, and the the songs that were written by Irving Berlin, Cole Porter, George Gershwin, Harold Arlen, um, were all recorded by um, 
you know, Ornette Coleman or, or Miles Davis to Louis Armstrong yeah. to Dean Martin, you know, Nat Cole. And they're the, they're, they still, I still think that like something like that was like Irving Berlin to me is the, the most modern because it's like, there may be trouble ahead. So while there's music and moonlight and love and romance, I mean, it's like those lyrics, it, I don't apologize for those anymore because in all the chaos that's going on, we need a little love and romance. Let's face the music and dance. It's very sort of, it's political, but it's not. It's just, but it's, a, it's quite a statement. And when those songs were written, um, uh, like Blue Skies, it's, it's still, you know, it's, it's like Spinal Tap. It's in the sad key. It's, <laughs> you know, it's a, and, um, you know, you can reinvent these songs. Like, like for instance, like the song, How Deep Is The Ocean? How much do I love you? I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? So you can interpret it like a jazz interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. Or you can take it and... How much do I love you? Tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How many times in a day do I think of you? <laughs> and then go sort of, you know, you know. But Alan Toussaint, Donny Hathaway, and and uh, uh, Leon Russell all somehow fit in there. And so th these are songs that Charlie Parker made in, in, in songs that were, you know, uh, that scrabble from the apple and ornithology that were written over top of of j jazz standards into new into new jazz songs. So I just feel like. Um, these are these songs are a great canvas for me. But what about what, what like when you're painting on that canvas? By the way, the, the music you're hearing right now, if you couldn't tell, is, is is beautiful and being played live in our studio by Diana Krall. When it comes down, when it comes time to put some paint on that camp canvas, when you have all the, when you have Ornette Coleman, when you have Miles Davis, when you have Charlie Parker, when you have these these voices in your head, Leon Russell, as you said. But at time the time comes to take these songs, which by virtue that you mentioned all those people, these songs have been done a lot. You know, there's yeah. there's no shortage of versions of Blue Skies for sure. You know, when it comes to paint your canvas on top of blue skies, what happens then? What, what goes well, to your brain? Um, blue skies smiling at me. I can just take it into to change it into a waltz. Uh, but it sounds you're, you're, you're making you're making I, it it's melancholy. It's creative. But I guess my point is that it's creative. Yeah. It's it's more cre it's cre it's my creative. Uh, voice is through jazz standards whether they were written years ago and to make them modern because the story is modern the way they were interpreted was in a very modern way or you can or you can you know just choose like we were talking about i'm confessing you know I, that was like what was funny about making this recording or not funny <laughs> but <laughs> la -dee -da. Uh, peculiar, well, i mean what was peculiar really, yeah i get it what was no it was really tough uh, and i had to trust that i could do you know uh, something that was a bossa nova mm -hmm. it's like you know you're, you're coming off this sort of Too. And then, and then in the sequence, it was like, I was like, I said to, I said to Tommy the Puma, "There's my vaudeville walk-on music. You can just loop. It's like from you know Annie Hall. It's like place looks wonderful from here. So how is that going to work with that? It just you just you make it work. But are you sitting down with the brain completely uncluttered, going, okay, I know Blue Skies like the back of my hand. I know I'm confessing. Well, I I've heard these songs. I've heard these songs before. I'm just going to see what comes out. Or, exactly. do, you, or, or do you go in with like, I'm going to make this version of that no song? No plans. No plans. Just like today. Just oh, I got a piano there. Can we do an interview at a piano, please? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all about and, it. And and ideas that come to me. While I'm sitting here, I think, oh, that I I think of Joni Mitchell, <laughs> you know, or, or other other things that I could do. I'm always moving forward, and I you just put have to put your hands on the keys and see where they take you. And working with the artists that I'm working with, like Tommy Lapuma, who's my producer, we'd be sitting exactly where you are, not be not behind the glass. Mm -hmm. And I, I should say I'm ne I'm next to Diane. Yes, right now. you are. Yeah. And 
um, <laughs> and I just get a piece of music with the right key, a couple different keys to see what feels comfortable. And, um, and then just, I don't articulate. So this, I know it's, you don't want like sort of dead airspace, <laughs> but, um, I, I, Tommy knew that, and the artists that I'm working with, they knew that it, it takes me time. And so I just, and it's all about tempo. So I just start messing with it and then everybody kind of figures it out. And you, I mean, I'm confessing was a warm up tune. Yeah, and you use the first take. You used three, three separate ensembles on this. Three separate ensembles. Why did you use three separate ensembles and not just stick? To, typically, with these records, records like this are are a record of a time of your collaboration with an ensemble. That's kind of how you worked in the past. Why did you work with three different ensembles? In this I didn't one? want to have a theme record. It wasn't a, supposed to be a tribute record. I didn't want to do like a bossa nova record. I started out with maybe a, um, a, a orchestral idea, and then. Um, that all sort of changed when I found a cassette tape of Ray Brown and I, um, uh, my first lesson with Ray Brown where he's playing with me and, and it, it, it ended up just, he was trying to teach me how to play how high the moon and I couldn't and I probably started to cry. There was a lot of silence on the, t- on the <laughs> tape and which he didn't even acknowledge. He just finally said, crawl, you know, play something you're comfortable with. You play? So I, pl- I, so I, <laughs> could happen to you. I wasn't singing at the time, I was just playing piano. And then all of a sudden, wham, he starts playing with me just like McEnroe hitting you a tennis ball, just not like we were in office or Serena, or, you know, all, all, that's the only analogy I can But I he, can he didn't of. go easy on he you. He just went, boom. Yeah. And I, and I went, oh, that is what I dreamt my whole life. It would be like, who would, it would be like you playing with well, I mean, I think like playing with, I, I want to point out I that mean, if you're listening to this, Ray Brown is one of the greatest jazz, jazz musicians bassist, ever, yeah. jazz bassist, jazz musicians ever, yes. ever to have lived. And I mean, playing with him is, I don't know, I don't even know what it's like. There's like Irish musicians who I would, I would give my left pinky finger to play with, you know, like there are, there are a lot of incredible musicians, but yeah. there's one thing to play with them and for them to take it easy on you, but he, he challenged you by playing his full weight behind you. Yeah. And I, and I think of Ella Fitzgerald, who he was married to for a very long time. And I, there's a, there's a tape of her turning around because I, as a singer, uh, you know, some sometimes people can tend to like play, you know, lightly and politely, and and I and I'm you know I'm kind of going don't don't worry about it, just 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 play. And um, but it's not the it's not the volume, it's the it's it's uh, it's the vibe and the feeling and and that in, it's that he's intense. And I Ray Brown and I found uh, also watching some footage where he's trying to get me to scat sing, and and he's just playing with all of us, and we're just kids, and he's just it's such a lovely thing to see now as. An, an older woman, I'm an older woman, but mm-hmm. I mean, and not looking at a young girl trying to figure out what I'm doing. Um, and to to see that process wasn't wasn't much different where he was, he was, uh, I, I took a trip da, 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 and I thought about you. It was while we were recording that. And he's like, come on, crawl, just like play around with the melody a little bit. And, yeah. and I was like, da, 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 da. and I was like, I am not a scat singer. I cannot do that. I, I also, I'm yeah. a jazz piano player, yeah. but I cannot scat sing. So I'm not going to do it. And he's like, okay, then just stick to the melody. So that became, when I found the tape, he said, what he said before I played, we said, play something you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. So that became the... The idea for me, the callus of, of this record, was just play something you're comfortable with. Be relaxed. Listen to those guys. They were they played so relaxed, yeah. and you know whether it was Fred Astaire or Elvis Gerald or Ben Webster, they played the way they played. Mm-hmm. Fred Astaire didn't try to be like a jazz singer. He just sang the way Fred Astaire sang. Mm-hmm. But those guys played the way they played, so they didn't adjust. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I don't think they did. But um, what were you looking for? What were you looking for? You you can have your you can have your um, pick of collaborators in jazz and in and out of jazz. And I have a feeling that what matters to you the most isn't pure chops, isn't just what they're able to play. What do you look for in a collaborator? Well, I don't have any chops. <laughs> I have a limited range. And then, um, But what do you look for? What are you looking for in these players? some songs are emotionally difficult for me and the chords are hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah those, those are the, is that the perfect old, I think it's a New Yorker cartoon where yeah. the guys, because I played a lot of piano bars in my day, mm-hmm. let me tell you. And there was, you know, the, the, the tip jar, the sort of glass of wine, he goes, well, I can't play this song because it's emotionally difficult for me and the chords are hard. Yeah. And I feel that way about a all, everything I do, but, but what do you, and like, what, I, like that's why I just like I was talking to and I'm name dropping, but go ahead. I um I just uh, had a very busy week doing uh, I'm very very busy and important, but uh-huh. um <laughs> I've had the great honor of meeting a lot of a lot of my heroes like like Burt Bacharach for instance, okay. and um I visited him while I was out making this recording in L.A. and I was reading his book while I was while I was doing. He sang a lot of the songs. 
well, I can only sing two. And I said to Bert, I said to Bert, I said, can you write something for me that's in my range, which is only an octave? Because all the songs, I said, Bert, I would be singing, I would do a whole album of your songs, except they're just too, I can't, I don't have the range to do it. It's frustrating for, it's frustrating. So, so what do you look for in a bass so, player? What do you look for in a drummer? What do you look for in a guitar player? Uh, I think it has to be a groove. And it, I, I don't mean like whether it's swinging or whether it's uh, what, classical music, any any music across the board, it has to be swinging. Like, look, that. Did you see that Beatles uh, documentary that Ron Howard did eight days a week? No, I didn't see it. No, no it's so no. swinging. I mean, it's just well, they were the, they were they, like, they, they swung in the early days. I listened to their I mean, version of uh, "Till There Was You" the other day. You know, yeah, that song? but not not swinging in the sense of jazz like swinging, but it's the, it's the feeling of it. It it can be any kind of beat. It's it's like Prince or or um, Yo Yo Ma or. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't think. I don't. I can't think about it. But it's. Are you? Are you? Are you picky? It's a term. Are you picky? Extremely. In in, in who you play with? Um. Well, I I. Not really. I mean, I'm very lucky because I I I get to play with these great musicians, and I got a chance to to work at. Um, I like to work with different musicians who understand. Um, the feeling of of. I think it's, I think, to try to express myself, I think that it's a very youthful and understandable thing to do to try to put everything you know into like one chorus and, or, or to play all the notes or try to have all the chops. Mm -hmm. But if you can, like, I like to work with kids. So, so sometimes I, because I think sometimes they're given music that they don't hear first. They just get music on a page and um, they just need to like listen to something and, and what they like and try to pick it out on the piano or whatever, or ocarina, whatever you want to, yeah, yeah. my son's playing the ocarina right now. And, and, um, he's and whatever, whatever you, you choose. And also to just the, the, the beauty of playing with kids like Ray Brown did with me to just play. I often work with kids. I just tell them, just, let's just play this note, just play it. And then, then that, and then if the if if a child is or or you know that I love working with, like I said, working with is it can, can play with me, and then they get that feel. So the, I just said, and and most kids can can do that, or they can just they can discover you know, even if you know you move forward, but all if I just play this chord, so it's about time, right? And also not a, you know just. Just, just sit there at the piano and play. Are they willing to play less? Are, are they, are they willing to play? But you more? have to have your Royal Conservatory as well, which I did, which is important. But if I hear, if you hear the music before, you're, I had a wonderful piano, classical piano teacher who, would play me records before, I would see the the piece that I was playing, and it made the it made everything different than you, just the notes on the page. Do, and lose the music, let it fall off, and see where you go. Do you still play classical music? No. No. But I listen. Yeah. I'm a listen to um i listen to the radio i listen to C- cbc good uh, how do you how do you feel about the kids these days how, like how do you feel about the state of jazz right now how do you feel about are are, are these are are you heartened by the people you're playing with that jazz has a good future i am but the more isolated i am the more i don't get to be a part of that what do you mean well I, you know i tend to tour very 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 uh, go on long tours, which I'm very thankful for. But I think it's important now. I'm finding balance to be more involved in in um, in what's going on and being aware of other other musicians and play with them. And I, I'm concerned about the lack of, um, not lack of. I you have to create. Uh, I think that they 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 it has to be as important as. Um, you know, the academics, arts have to be as important as the academics, that it's not something that you just do after you get your academics. It has to be right up there in, in the, uh, your classes in school. And I'm not saying it's not in schools. I'm no. just saying that I think, um, I mean, if I went to if I went to any school, I'd probably spend all day there. I just love it. I love being in my, like, for instance, my, my children go to an amazing school, and I, I love just being around there. I find it inspiring just being there. Yeah. And they and they have... Uh, uh, a, a, a screen television that's, that pl- that plays jazz or different um, 
videos of people playing. I mean, if, yeah, if, I, if I'd had YouTube when I was a kid, I would just be like... <laughs> you wouldn't have left the house. No, that's why like, yeah. I've been watching like Ray Brown videos and yeah. Um, but so I if think, anything, this generation has more. I guess what I was going to say I'm concerned yeah. is, uh, this concern is, is that kids have time to daydream. Yeah. Because there's so much coming at them all the time that there's space. But I think kids will naturally do that. We're going to play I'm Confessing on the way out of this interview. We're going to play your version of I'm Confessing. You said earlier that it was a, it was a rehearsal take. Are we over now? Well, we, yeah, we, we only had you for 20 minutes. Well, no, I don't want to do that. Do <laughs> you want to keep going? We can keep, we want to go, we want to keep going? Are you enjoying yourself? This is yourself? my favorite thing to do. I'm yeah. having fun, too. Well, tell, talk to me about I'm Confessing, then. We'll see where we go. Oh, uh, well, I'm Confessing was with um, was our first day with uh, Tony Garnier on bass, who plays uh, with Bob Dylan mm -hmm. for years. And um, I'd never worked with him before, but I knew about him. And uh, uh, Kareem Riggins, who's playing drums, uh, has played with me, but he does other projects he's a he's they're all art, artists on their own mark rebo who um has his own band called um you know ceramic dog and has been sort of the generator with tom waits uh rain dogs you're familiar with his yeah you mentioned he was on yeah. rain dogs meal variations and, and meal, everything yeah. he's just and and he was, he was on glad ride doll i worked with him and played with him a little bit um and uh Stuart duncan on on fiddle the great the great fiddle player bluegrass fiddle player maybe. they're all artists who work in different genres and their own elements and their own worlds outside of jazz and what do you like about that what I, do you like about I, working I with non-jazz players i well i'd like putting that ensemble together because they all they all can play they all they all can play jazz but, but putting it just made things a little different uh and it was exciting for me to see well so we just started with and with um, I'm Confessing because it was just a warm up tune. I thought, I, I don't even remember what he did. And, I, and Tony Garney was right, right where you are, what here. You yeah. know, I, always have, I always like to have bass be right at my left hand because Jimmy Rolls taught me that you can sort of point to chords. That you want to, that you might want to go to with your little finger. Oh, really? You can, you can signal over to the here, bass player a little I bit. Over yeah. here, so Tony's here, so he's washing my hands, and he's just like, "Okay, here we go." And, and Rebo, and we just started playing, and um, and Tommy Lapuma uh, just was beside himself. He was so excited, and and then I kind of forgot about it, and I, I didn't, I didn't like my vocal performance on it. And I'm not one to overdub. I don't. I play everything live yeah. that I can. Yeah. yeah. And, and I listened to it again, and I came to Tommy. I said. That's pretty good. And he says, babe, I'm telling you. He, he knew how to give me space. He knew that I needed space in the studio and time, to, like, like a couple days to think about things. And so that was the only song that I did some vocal work, a little vocal work on, because mm -hmm. I just fell in love with it. Well, this, you're, you're one of the last performers that I know that when I listen to your record, it still feels like a record. Like it feels like a record. I talk about this in the show a lot, but it feels like a record of time. Like I feel when I listen to it, I hear that day. And I, I feel like I hear that week, and I feel like I, I'm not hearing a, I'm not hearing six months on Van Morrison's hi hats. You know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm hearing what your band sounded like in that day. It's a really tremendous record, Diana. And thank you. And we had a great time making it. And um, you know, but but I don't, I don't like articulate. I'm not. I don't, like I said, I'm not a planner. I don't come in and say, okay, we're gonna do this and we do this. It's it's really just trusting that everybody that you're working with is gonna bring something much more than I could ever ask them to do. And, learn? and the only thing that I usually say is just, just play less, or it's got to be quieter. Or it's just finding the vibe. And and with those great art, with great artists, like I'm just so lucky, but that they understand that, and that I understand it too. And I'm coming into my own more comfortable, as 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 Ray said, in 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 who I am as an artist and what I do, and not trying to trying so hard, you know, and, and letting the music happen and letting it vibe out, not worrying about the, oh, it has to be shorter than this because people don't have short attention spans and just, and just recall, you know, in, in Sway, for instance, just let it, just uh, let it play out so that people have time to sort of like, you know, snog a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's how I think about it. I think it's just like this. You, you get a little bit more time. You have, you have some like live out tunes. You get a yeah. little more time to kiss. Yeah, like the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Diana Carl, thanks for coming in. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I really love being here today. It's I love. Just, I love having this, you too. Just, I'll come back tomorrow. Whenever you want. Whenever you want.